Paula Flaherty and good evening. Leading our news bulletin for tonight, Nui's national sporting body is seriously re-evaluating future participation at regional and international sporting events. This comes as Team Nui returned from the 14th Pacific Games in New Caledonia, coming away with eight medals from weightlifting and powerlifting. Nui's athletes to the Games are now all back on the island, and issues raised during the Games posed a need to relook at the standards and the selection of athletes and future participation. I gave the coach the benefit of the doubt to make sure that uh, their management uh, will uh, take care of the selection of the fleets and also take their fleets who will have uh, the good attitude, not, not only for sports but in respect to other uh, athletes or officials they go to the sports. What will Niskaga be doing now to ensure that the standards that we set are actually met to ensure that we receive the results that we set out to get? I would not say that uh, all the standards were bad. Uh, some were very high standard, but some were questionable, um, which brings the, to me um, again the, the question that I myself, in for the future's sake, I will be involved in uh, the final selection of the team from now on. You know, uh, I've given them the benefit of the doubt, but I think that some did not follow that. Uh, so now, for the sake of the new sports in future, I will need to be there involved uh, right down to the wire before the team leave anyway. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Niskaga President Des Hipper voiced his disappointment at the last-minute withdrawal of three sports codes that left the sporting body 3,000 US dollars out of pocket. A breakdown in communication that also saw the island's female shooting team turn up to New Caledonia only to find out that there was no event for the ladies. It's one of the things that we need to sit down and um, debrief when once the Secretary General get back and the shift the mission. And I need to go down to the bottom of it and find out why w th that happened. Uh, because manuals were given out to them and reminders from the games of the events, finalizing the events to, in New Caledonia. And I didn't know about it until New Caledonia. And um, I can't say much now, but uh, I need to, to get to the bottom of it and someone's going to be answerable for that. The future representation for any international, we need to, I, we need to downsize the team to, to start with. We need only to send the, the best and I think we really need to look at developing the, the younger, up-and-coming athletes. That's, that's the way forward for Newe, and res, we uh, spend some uh, resources on developing them. Uh, some now, um, some athletes now I see a bit long on the tooth, uh, and we need to review that as well. And then again, I think for the future, you know, uh, I need to be there to make sure that uh, athletes are uh, up to standard, and also management level. Uh, we need to tidy up the things, um, more so because, you know, there's a lot of resources given by the government and by the families and the community to send a team, and it's only fair that uh, we send the best team for Niue. Des says that in the future they will need to look at downsizing team numbers to ensure that only the best athletes are taken, and more involvement on his part in ensuring that standards are met and selection criteria is followed. Niwe mourns the loss of a great man as Sam Pata Emanitangilangi, 75, passed away at his family home over the weekend. A well-respected leader within the Niuean community, Mr. Tangilangi was the first Speaker of the House of Assembly, serving 24 years from 1972 to 1996. Prior to that, he worked in the New Zealand Internal Affairs and Island Territories Department in Wellington from 1958 to 1963, later appointed as the Treasurer, the Head of the Inland Revenue and Control of Customs. He also served in a number of government committees. Mr Tangilangi was also notably the first New Wayan University degree holder. He is described by some as an administrator, a statesman who will be remembered for his dedication and service to a nation whose building leadership inspired many. Sam Tang Leung was a former general manager of the New Development Bank and later set up a private accounting business. 
Sam Tangilangi is survived by his wife, Etena Ilori Ni Heko Tangilangi, one daughter and five sons. Our deepest condolences to the family. Niwe's Legislative Assembly is due to meet tomorrow for its monthly meeting that was deferred by a week as the Premier, the Speaker of Assembly and other members of the House were overseas. Tomorrow's meeting will see the tabling of the Niwe Politalica Numismatic Company Amendment Bill for 2011 as well as the annual reports for Justice Lands and Survey Department and the Philatelic and Numismatic Company budget for 2011 to 2012. The Bill's Committee Terms of Reference for 2011 to 2014 will also be tabled before questions from the members of the House of Assembly. The member for Hakupu, Young Vivian, will be raising issues related to the assistance for sustaining the Wayne language, also rehashing issues into the building or museum for national artifacts for Taonga Niwe. A majority of the questions, however, will be from Commonwealth member Terry Ko, with questions ranging from sealing of roads from areas near the hospital, industrial park and Fualahi. Some questions are a follow-up of questions asked at previous meetings that look at the new Immigration Act and conditions for PR status, $15 power surcharge removal, renovations to the new high school hall and more. The meeting will be broadcasted live on Radio Sunshine tomorrow morning. Niwe Fisheries is excited with the news that one of the satellite pop-up tags deployed last year has resurfaced with much needed data. The Wahoo tagging project carried out about this time last year saw Niue take the lead in research into Wahoo species, or Bala as it is known on the island. The research into the species was to identify whether Wahoo are resident or migratory fish, what their feeding habits are and much more in-depth knowledge into the species of interest for Niue. Apparently the tag was found on a beach in Tonga by a Kiwi fisherman. It has now been sent to Hawaii to retrieve data. Brendan Parsisi says that it is rare to retrieve the devices and it means that data logged on the device will ensure a much finer resolution. This serves as a good return on a project that costs half a million dollars but the information gained is worth much more. This exciting news will help solve the many mysteries into the Wahoo species. Alofi Makos maintained their winning streak in the second round of the New England Rugby Union 7 series last Saturday, winning all five games, placing them on top of the points table. Previous champions Tuapa were knocked off their perch in a tough matchup. Officials are saying that last Saturday's tournament was a good indication of the fitness levels of all teams as each team played five games, providing more game time for players, but the scorching heat also tested the will of many to continue on. But the overall rankings following both tournaments has Alofi Marcos on top with 23 points, followed by Tuapa with 11, Avasele in third with 6 points and Likula Kappa also with 6 points. Cavaliers have 5 points and Hakupu with Three. This weekend's tournament has been postponed until further notice, but with one tournament to go, that will give teams one more chance to redeem themselves and a final chance to impress selectors who have discreetly been observing potential development players for selection. And that concludes our news bulletin here on BCN for tonight. We do hope that you can join us for our next news bulletin.